Is Bill Maher, the comedian slash political commentator, right about the resurrection of Jesus Christ? This is Impact Evangelism. This is part 27 of the video series, The Disciples' Trilemma. And in The Disciples' Trilemma, we discuss how there's only three options when it comes to the disciples' testimony concerning the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The disciples were, number one, deceivers. Number two, they were mistaken. Or number three, they were telling the truth. And in this video series, we take the position that, yes, the disciples were telling the truth. And today, we're going to look at Bill Maher and what Bill Maher says about Jesus and the resurrection of Christ. Bill Maher makes some claims in his movie called Religious. I think I pronounced that right. But it's really a mockumentary that makes fun of uh, the Bible and makes fun of Jesus and makes fun of Christians. So you know where Bill's coming from, but he makes some claims in this movie. And we're going to look at these claims now. What does Bill claim about Jesus and the resurrection? So what Bill Maher does is he pretty much parrots the dying and rising God myths, right? Now what this, how this argument goes is like this. That of course Jesus didn't exist. He was a myth. He was totally made up. Where does the story come from? Well, whoever wrote the Bible, they claim, we don't even know who wrote the Bible. Disciples, eh, we don't know. A hundred years later, two hundred years, we don't know when the Bible was written. But rest assured, when they wrote the Bible, it was all false. And what they claim in the New Testament, that these disciples took ancient stories of pagan gods and came up with the story of Jesus. In other words, they looked at all of these ancient gods and said, hey, let's make up our own religion. And what we can do is we can steal from all of these pagan myths and come up with our own new religion. And this what is <laughs> what Bill Maher claims, right? This is what he believes. So he is thoroughly in the Jesus Mither camp. And really, there's only a couple of guys that I know of personally uh, who are academics or who are scholars who claim this and that's Price and Carrier and these two guys and Bill Maher <laughs> are on the total fringe really of of New Testament studies I mean no New Testament scholar really takes this uh, seriously this Jesus Mither stuff and in fact the overwhelming all but these two guys whether they be atheist scholars agnostic scholars Jewish scholars, secular scholars, and of course Christian scholars all say that Jesus is not a myth. He was a real person. So right away we know that Bill Maher puts himself on the very fringe of what people actually believe. And really it's not true. What Bill claims in this video, uh, what Bill claims in his movie, excuse me, is just not true. And we're going to go through all of his claims in this video. So here are the claims that Bill makes in his movie. Uh, first of all, he, he tells people that, hey, you know, Jesus is just a myth. That he's made up. And he comes from old pagan religions. And he even says this. The story of Jesus was going around the Mediterranean a thousand years before Christ. And here's what he gives as proof. He says, Krishna who was a thousand years before Christ, he says these are the similarities between Krishna and Jesus. Was a carpenter. He was born of a virgin. And he was baptized in a river. And then he talks about Mithras. And he says Mithras, who was 600 years before Christ, was born on December the 25th. He performed miracles. He was resurrected from the dead on the third day. And he was known as the Lamb, the Way, the Truth, the Savior, and the Messiah. Then he says the Egyptian god Horus was just like Jesus too. He was the Son of God. He was born to a virgin mother. He was baptized in a river by Anup the Baptizer. He healed the sick and the blind. 
and he cast out demons, and he was crucified, and three days later he was resurrected. Now we're going to look at those claims in detail a little bit further on in this video, but where does this come from? Where does this Jesus myth even start? Well, according to Steve Gregg, who is a, a professor at Trinity College of the Bible and Theological Seminary, says this, that all this Jesus myth or stuff can be traced back to French Enlightenment thinkers. And he names them. He says all of this comes from Constantine Francois Volney and Charles Francois Dubois, and these French thinkers wrote down these ideas in the 1790s. And that's a long time to wait to talk about Jesus being a myth. That's just, just 200 years ago. When you compare to, you know, Christian, Christianity has been around for 2,000 years, and this Jesus myth or story has only been around a couple of hundred years, that should tell you something. Now, the first scholar to advance these theories was a guy named Bruno Maurer in the 19th century. And really, Robert Price and Richard Carrier are the only two uh, academics today that carry this Jesus myth or torch. And there, there's a good reason why they're the only two. These theories have been totally and thoroughly debunked. But why is it popular today? Uh, and, you know, academia, you have Price and Carrier, and that's about it. They're the only ones, you know, carrying on this Jesus myth stuff. But in the popular world, I mean, it's all over the place. It's on the internet. It's on, you know, web pages, YouTube channels. They're all, it's all over the place. And you can trace this new, you know, revival, if you will, of the Jesus myth stuff to the movie Zeitgeist and to popular writer... Uh, Murdoch, Ms. Murdoch, and you can probably put it on Bill Maher too as well because he's a, he's a popular guy and he parrots all of this Jesus Mither stuff. And again, this, you know, Jesus never lived stuff has been just thoroughly debunked. I mean, there's tons of historical evidence that talk about not Jesus just living but being crucified, okay? You know, text outside of the Bible. Ancient history talks about Jesus being crucified. I mean, it's all over the place. I can, I'm going to leave a description in the description box a link to this playlist, The Disciples Trilemma, where we go over a lot of this information. So we won't go over that here, but just know that this Jesus never lived theory has been totally debunked. It's just not true. But how does that link get from Jesus just being made up to Jesus being a copycat of old dying and rising God pagan myths. Well, we can trace it back to a few guys. We can trace this information about the Jesus being a copycat God back to uh, a poet, <laughs> yes, a poet, and self-credentialed Egyptologist Gerald Massey. And Massey makes these claims about Jesus being a myth and the rising in God a dying and rising God myths and Jesus being just like them, right, in a book called Natural Genesis in 1883. Now, he was not an Egyptologist, and subsequently, of course, Egyptologists have, uh, have thoroughly debunked all of these theories. Another source is James George Frazier in his book entitled The Golden Bough that he wrote in 1890. And Frazier was a social anthropologist, and Frazier himself, I want you to get this, even admits that his theories were speculative and circumstantial. In other words, they don't come from ancient sources. They are made up. Now to recap, the Jesus myth theory starts in the late 1790s with French Enlightenment thinkers. This is where it originates, not from 2,000 years ago, but 200 years ago. And then it's picked up by Bauer and and Massey and Frazier. And then it, you know, perpetuates a little bit into the early 20th century. Then it fades away because academia has caught up with all of the mess that Massey pretty much invented on his own and saw that it wasn't true, that none of these, none of these myths 
that they claim that Jesus was just like, that it's just not there. The proof the, is not there. It's pretty much all speculation. And it is all speculation. And it's all made up stuff. So it goes away. But it, it has made a revival in recent times. And it's made a revival because of the internet. And people have picked up these old theories and thrown them out on the internet in movies like Zeitgeist and writers like Murdoch and people like Bill Maher and people like Price and Carrier. So this Jesus Smith story is still perpetuated out there on YouTube land by all of these atheists, right, who parrot all of this bad information and Christians hear this and they just say, wow, what, really? All this stuff, Jesus was just like all these old ancient gods? Man, I never knew that. But it's not true. And we're going to take all of these points that Bill makes in his movie and we're going to discuss them one by one and see if it holds up to the truth. So let's discuss all of the ancient documents that Bill uses and Massey uses and Fraser uses and Bauer uses and Zeitgeist uses and Murdoch uses and all these French thinkers, guys who names I can't pronounce off the top of my head, right? How many ancient documents do all of these guys use to prove their theories? That's right, none. None. None of this information comes from ancient history. It starts in the 1790s. So Bill picks up all of this stuff, right, and he, and he puts it in his movie. And first of all, he talks about the god Krishna. Now, Krishna is a Hindu god depicted as blue and oftentimes playing a flute. And Krishna is pretty much known as a ladies' man. Dead ringer for Jesus Christ, am I right? And these are the claims that Bill makes in his movie about Krishna and Jesus being just alike. He says Krishna was a carpenter. Well, first of all, Bill misquotes his own bad sources. I can only trace this Jesus, Carp this Krishna carpenter stuff back to Ms. Murdoch. And Ms. Murdoch says that Krishna's father was a carpenter, not Krishna himself. So Bill even misquotes his own bad source. But was Krishna's father a carpenter? Nope. He was a nobleman. Bill says that Krishna was born of a virgin. No virgin bear story, ain't eh, wrong. Now Bill claims that Krishna was born of a virgin. There is no virgin birth story. In fact, his parents had seven children before he was born. According to the Hindu text, the Mahabharata. Bill talks about Mithras. Now, Mithras was worshipped and became popular with Roman soldiers in the 2nd and 3rd centuries. That's right, you heard me right. The 2nd and 3rd centuries. This is after Jesus. So, to claim that Jesus copied Mithras, there's no written documents defining what the beliefs are about Mithras nor the rituals. None of that exists. And scholars can only make assumptions based on artwork. And what's known about Mithras is that he was born out of a rock and he killed a bull. And that's about it. And there really is no connection whatsoever with the Persian god by the same name. Manfred Klaus, a professor of ancient history at Free University of Berlin, says this. The mysteries cannot be shown to have developed from Persian religious ideas nor does it make sense to interpret them as a forerunner of Christianity. Now, what does he claim about Mithras and Jesus being just alike? He says that Mithras was born on December the 25th. That's right, but so what? That's not even part of the Bible story about Jesus. That's not even in the New Testament. There's nowhere in the New Testament that says when Jesus was born. So Bill's claim not only... It's wrong. It's really wrong. 
because he claims that the disciples who wrote the New Testament stole this story from pagan gods. And no, that's not true. Now, it's true that around the 4th or 5th century, the church came up with uh, Jesus' birthday as the December 25th. But so what? Again, that's not even in the Bible. So the claim that the disciples stole all this from old ancient pagan gods doesn't hold up on December 25th because it's not even in the Bible. He says this about Mithras as well, that he performed miracles. Well, you know, name a mythical god that didn't perform miracles. I mean, that's just a silly argument. And there's nothing like the miracles that Mithras maybe did compared to what Jesus did because Jesus is written as a historical figure and Mithras is not. Then he said Mithras was resurrected from the dead. Nope, this is not true. And in fact, we don't have any records of Mithras ever even dying. And then he says... Mithras was known as the Lamb, the Way, the Truth, the Savior, the Messiah. That's nope. None on all of these. And in fact, again, Mithras became popular in Rome in the 2nd and 4th centuries, sec between the 2nd and 4th centuries, that's after Jesus. Mithriatic scholar Edwin Yamauchi says this, Writers don't have the languages. They don't study their original sources. They don't pay attention to the dates, and they frequently quote ideas that were popular in the 19th and 20th centuries. And the internet also perpetuates outdated and disproven theories. This is what a scholar says about the Jesus mythers. And then Bill talks about Horus. Horus was the Egyptian god of kingship and the sky. And he was depicted with a falcon's head and a human body. Then he says this about Horus. And Jesus being just alike. He said all of this comes from the Book of the Dead. The Egyptian Book of the Dead. And this is wrong. There is no one Egyptian Book of the Dead. There are several Egyptian Books of the Dead. And they're found in, uh, in tombs and in with mummies. And they changed the myth over time. The New Testament writers didn't, didn't even have access to this information. Then he says this about Horus, that he was the son of God. Well, no, he's the son of Osiris, one of many gods, and in no sense can parallel the second person of the Trinity, the son of God, Jesus Christ. And he says he was born of a virgin, no again. Now here is Horus's birth story. His mother was Isis. Uh, no, not the terrorist group. She was not a virgin. She was married to Osiris. And Osiris was killed and chopped up into 14 pieces. And Isis puts him back together. But she can't find his male reproductive organ. So she makes him a new one. And then she copulates with Osiris. And then Horus is born. He is the offspring. That's just like the Jesus birth story, is it not? Then he goes on to say that Horus was baptized in a river by Anup the baptizer. No. This never happened. He's never baptized in any ancient account, and Anup the baptizer is never mentioned in any ancient account. He healed the sick. He healed the blind. He cast out demons. And this is the closest thing I could come up with when it comes to trying to say that Jesus healed people and Horus healed people is this. Is that magicians in Egypt would do a Horus spell on the sick people. And what they would do, they would say this spell over sick people, and they believed that Horus's spirit somehow would be with them and make them better. And that's nothing like what the Bible depicts as Jesus doing. Then he says that Horus was crucified. Nope. Never happened. No records. And of course, the crucifixion wasn't even in Egypt until 300 B.C., when Alexander the Great introduced it. And Horus myth stories originate 2000 BC. 
So that's not even in the same time period. Crucifixion wasn't even known in Egypt when Horus was around. Then he says that Horus was resurrected from the dead. Nope. So Mars claims that Horus is just like Jesus is nothing but a bunch of Horus manure. Now again, Bill is doing nothing but parroting old material that starts with Gerald Massey mainly and Frazier and those old French thinkers that said Jesus never existed in the 1790s is where all this stuff originates. And then, you know, then Zeitgeist picks it up. Murdoch picks it up. And then Bill Maher and his buddies Price and Carrier pick it up. And they just perpetuate all of this old, bad, made-up information about Jesus. Now, here's the ironic thing. Is that they claim that the story in the Bible, in the New Testament, is made up. Totally fabricated. And that the New Testament writers copied stuff from old pagan gods that used to die and rise again. And all of this has been disproven. And in fact, it's the Jesus mythers who made up the story about Jesus coming from those gods. See the irony in this? Irony can be pretty ironic sometimes. So to sum up, is Bill right? <laughs> So you, Christian, you can, you can know that this information is wrong. You might have come across people who say this. You might have come across a video that talks about all this stuff. And just know that it's not true. Just study it on your own. Study these people on your own. Go back and research some of the names I gave you today, and you'll see that all of this stuff that the Jesus mythers make up about Jesus is just flat-out false. So if you want to make an impact on this world, what are you waiting for? Go out today and tell people that Jesus died for their sins and rose again the third day. And if they repent of those sins and trust in Him, they can have eternal life. And I'll see you next time on The Disciples Trilemma.